Welcome to Anaheim, California, in the heart of Orange County, and a sold-out Angel Stadium for the 2005 THQ World Supercross GP and the THQ AMA Supercross Series. Well, dreams do come true. I've been dreaming about Jeremy McGrath coming back. The seven-time champ is here, and he's going to be racing, and he's going to be racing against a guy that everybody's been talking about for years, the winningest rider in 125cc history, James Bubba Stewart, throwing LaRocco, Pastrana, Barry, Boss, Billiman, and Ricky Carmichael has 11 titles to his name, and oh my gosh, it is going to be a shootout. And hey, let's not forget, a little bit of mud on the track today. The 32nd board is sideways. History in the making. The greatest 250 in a long time as we take a look at taking off. Carmichael gets a great jump, goes right to the front. Who will pick up the Butterfinger Chris Paul shot? Number four, Ricky Carmichael back in the game. Kevin Windham sits in second place, but it is Carmichael on board the Suzuki out in front. Windham is second. And here comes James Stewart, number 259, in third. And Ricky Carmichael getting the triple and all the rust. James Stewart trying to dive inside of Kevin Windham. It was too muddy there. It wasn't a good line to go for. So you got to remember, experience may pay off. James Stewart going for his first win ever in the 250 class. So Carmichael leads them into the green flag lap. Kevin Windham sits in second, and James Bubba Stewart sits in third. We take a look at the Butterfinger Chris replay, and you couldn't have drawn it up any better than this, Cameron. Well, Ricky didn't have the jump. It was Windham. It looked like they had the jump. And then look at Ricky come running up right down the middle and has a great line in the first turn. Gets on the binders, grabs the brakes and up, and gets the line. James Stewart went down, and that is Jeremy Albrecht trying to get it up. Just look at that. So James has we talked about earlier that the handguard can cause a problem if you crash. And just there, it looks like James Stewart's handguard maybe cause a problem with that throttle or front brake. So James Stewart back on the horse again. Will he be able to track down Carmichael, who is well out in front by over 100 yards over second place, Kevin Windham. For a guy who missed all of last season, Cameron, this is unbelievable. But just to show you how great he's been running, he's about 50 yards away from lapping James Stewart. And right now, he's going to lap David Zilliman, who so many people, including himself, pit me to win this race. And well, I didn't pick him to win the race, but I picked him to do a lot better than he's doing now. Oh, and Carmichael's down. Does he keep the bike running is the question. He's trying to pick it up on the uphill. He may need to drag it down, yeah, and he does. Do. Still down. Welcome back to Angel Stadium. Moments ago, Ricky Carmichael went down, and he is struggling to get the bike up. He's lost one position. Kevin Windham has gone to the lead. The problem is his positioning on the track, and the bike is dead, Cameron. He was unable to save the clutch. He got it kicked on the first start. Now Ricky's going to have to backtrack to spin the bike around. Oh, oh, and Carmichael goes down again. And he's going to have to pick it up on the uphill again. He needs, again, watch for him to swing the wheels down and around. Carmichael had a commanding lead. We saw Wyndham go by. There's his mechanic, Mike Gosler, looking on. But one kick last time to start it. We'll see where Ricky is this time. Remember, he's shorter of stature. It's harder for him to get his foot All up right. and over the bike. Let's, here's how it happened while we were in commercial. Carmichael looking good right here. Cross ruts going around Villeman. His bike is on the uphill. He has to pull it down. Kevin Windham comes into the picture. I, I bet he comes around that corner camera and says, I cannot believe after Carmichael had a 15 second lead that he went down. But you mentioned it, he could go down at any time and it's a long race and Carmichael finds out just how slippery the track is. Meanwhile, Chad Reed has found trouble in his own. And I'll tell you what, Ricky's words have proved prophetic, Cameron. You can't win the title here, but you certainly can lose it. Chad Reed gets the bike rolling once again. So as we sort through everything that has happened thus far, Carmichael leading for the first six laps. He goes down. Wyndham inherits the lead, and Ricky Carmichael goes down again, and he has slid all the way back to sixth place. They continue to move out in the mud, and it looks like that time Carmichael's caught him. The problem is, Cameron, when the guys are going down and you have momentum going, you don't want to dump your momentum out to stall and try to avoid a guy, so you just hope you can steer around him. Chad Reed now has got a smoking engine. He's got fluid just pouring out of the bottom of that thing. Not only that, it looks like he's got a problem oh, with his front, front brake. Now, I don't know if his handguard broke and is, is wound up in there or if he's just got a bunch of...
into mud. Now look here, he's holding on to the motorcycle so he won't get mud on his hands. He's holding that clutch down in that muck to try to keep the bike alive. Remember, the bike's already weighed 230 pounds. Add all the mud, how much does it weigh? This is a catastrophic problem. This is an absolute disaster for our defending champion, number 22, Chad Reed. The front wheel seemingly has locked up. He is over. He, look at the front wheel is not moving. And Chad Reed was in second place. He is now sliding back to Cameron. He is in serious problems right now. Meanwhile, Kevin Windham has had the good fortune of being out in front after Ricky Cole oh. built an almost surmountable lead, and Windham now runs into problems. And he stalls the bike. And the problem is he's got a four-stroke, and you know how tough those are to get going again. Ricky Carmichael once again is closing in. I do not believe this. In what could have been an absolute disaster for Carmichael, the turn of events are unbelievable. Carmichael currently sitting in second. And now he is without his goggles. Carmichael, for some reason, has dumped his goggles. Talking to Paggio from Oakland, he said he loaded them up with 18 tearaways. That's the helmet cam. That's the Ricky, view Ricky see it. Oh, oh, Carmichael goes down. Here comes Pastrana along the side there. But I don't believe that's for a position. Pastrana has dropped back. But Ricky keeps the bike running, so Mike LaRocco slides in it. Oh, you got to be kidding me. LaRocco's in fourth, Carmichael in third, Pastrana in second, and Wyndham is still in the lead. So Kevin Wyndham able to save that, but what a turn of events. Cameron, I don't think I've seen anything like this in a long time. For sure, and the one, oh! Mike LaRocco double pass Ricky Carmichael for third place! So Mike LaRocco now moves into second place. Kevin Windham is your leader. Ricky Carmichael sits in third. It's your leader, Kevin Windham, with half a lap to go. Carmichael got the whole shot, but Windham held on, made the right decision at the right time when Ricky went down, and he has not relinquished his lead. It's one more turn from number 14, and he will take home the prize. Your winner from Anaheim, Kevin Windham. Kevin went with five wins last year on the season, finished second in the Supercross Series. I don't think he could have started it off any better. He's got to be excited inside there. I can't wait to hear from him.